Hi everyone, it's Jordan from It's So Pastiche. Today we are going to be making paper roll pillow boxes that I got from BluePurpleAndScarlet.com. Check out her blog, I'm going to put the details in the description. So let's go. Hi everyone, so let's get started making these beautiful pillow boxes. So what you will need, a used toilet paper roll holder, a used paper towel roll holder, something round. I use the top to a bowl. You can use the top to anything, a jar or anything round that you have lying around would be great. A paintbrush, you're going to do some painting on the pillow boxes and the paint color of your choice. I'm using turquoise for this one but you can use absolutely any color that appeals to you. You will need a scoring tool. If you don't have a scoring tool, you can use the back of the handle of the scissors. I have one, so I'm going to use it. It's a little more precise and easier to handle, but you can use scissors. You will need scissors for this project. And lastly, you will need a ruler. One thing I didn't mention is you will need the ribbon of your choice or any kind of accessories or embellishments that you want to use on the project. So we're ready to go. So I'm doing this project because I have a gift card that I'm giving to a friend of mine and I need something to put this in that's different, that's not your usual envelope. I want something that sets itself apart and something that's different. So I'm going to use the paper towel roll holder because I need it to be a little bigger than the toilet paper roll holder because as you see the card is uh, a little too fitting here. So I need something a little bigger. So what I'm going to need is actually a 5 inch cut. So what I do first is I mash it down with both hands. Just put as much pressure as you can. You just want to get that first press down because what we're going to do now is take our scoring tool and we're going to run it along the length of the paper towel roll holder and you're going to do that on all sides. So you'll flip it around, do it on the opposite end, you'll flip it over and you'll do the exact same thing on the opposite side. And once you give it this first pass you're going to want to flip it back over and here you're going to just go over every crease so not both creases at the same time but each crease and do the same thing on both sides of the holder and you're apply, applying enough pressure to try to get it as flat as possible. It's going to still puff a little bit. I mean it's a pillow box and that means it sits exactly like a pillow does. It's not flat and that amount of fluff that you get in there is okay because you can still work with it and do what you want with it but get it as flat as you possibly can just to make it easier to work with. Pull out your ruler and what you're going to do is lay it over the top of the roll holder and you're going to measure at five inches this is if you're doing it for a gift card. If you're doing it for something like let's say candy or something else that you want to fill it with, you may make it longer. Do it however long you need, but if you're doing a gift card, five inches is the perfect measure. So make sure you do that. And I forgot my pencil. <laughs> so all I'm doing here is cutting at the five inch mark on each side. The cut that you make does not have to be perfect because you're making flaps on each end. No one's going to see it. So you know just do your best and that small cut I think we all can make that pretty pretty well. So here's what you have. A five inch roll that you flatten down to be your pillow box space. So now you're going to take your round tool and with this, this is where you're going to score your flat marks. So in scoring your flat marks, what you want to do is you want to line the edges of the circle up with the edges of the roll holder. And you know, you're just gauging it. You'll get a better idea once you lay it down flat. So see here, I'm kind of sliding it around to see where I hit the exact corner and once you get it there you're going to hold it down with one hand and you're going to score around it with the other hand. So take your score tool and this is where you make that crease. Now again if you don't have a scoring tool you may use scissors or you need something to make an indention. So if you use scissors you're going to kind of lay them down. Now see that crease? That's where I'm going to eventually fold. Now what I'm going to do is just do the same thing on 
this side and then flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. So like I was saying, if you don't have a scoring tool, you can use a pencil, you can use, let's say, a pen that doesn't have ink in it. You just need something to make that crease for you, but that's also not going to make a mark on the cardboard. Because even if you fold it and it has a mark on it, it will show. So I've done the sides of it and again you can see where it's scored where I'm going to make the fold so what I'm gonna do is just kinda press in it's kinda hard to do holding it up to the camera so bear with me but I'm just going to press in on that line to just get it folded once I get it folded I'm going to pinch the edges because this is how I'm going to get it to lay down flat so see it's laying down now pull that side up and then turn it around and do the opposite side. Do the same thing. You're going to fold it along that crease. Get it nice and folded there. You're just pushing it in on the inside. Pinch those corners. Run your fingers along the edge. You're going to pull it back up and then push it back down. And that's just to make sure that you've got a good fold. So in the end, let me show you what it'll look like. You just close it up. So once you do that, pinch the edges again. What you're doing is training that cardboard to do what you want it to do. We need it to be pliable so that we can get it in the shape where we want it so it can stay closed in the end. See? We've got a nice tuck. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm folding, I'm creasing, pinching the edges. I'm going to pull it up, I'm going to tuck it back down, reinforce that fold. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Reinforce that fold, pull it up, then I'm going to tuck them both down. Make sure I've got a nice good tuck there. Pinch those edges to make sure it's somewhat secure. You're going to tie ribbon around it so you'll have something to hold it but make sure that's secure and voila! We have a pillow box folks. Look at it! It's awesome! Just think you pay for these at the store and now we're making our own. So now we're going to get started with the rest of the project in terms of decorating and making it our own. So, grab your paint, and this is where we're going to start adding what we would like to see on the pillow box. Again, the paint color is up to you. I happen to be using turquoise. I'm just going to squeeze it out on my craft mat. You can put it on a plate or bowl or, you know, anything. I grab my brush. Now, here's the deal. You're just going to just slap it on there. I know that sounds crazy, but this is not done in any kind of neat fashion because in the end it's just going to be a very unique looking piece no matter what you decide to do so don't seek perfection just seek artistry so I'm just putting a nice almost a rectangular shape of paint but it's just kind of whatever yours can be you can just do a rectangle uh, a slim shape you can do it horizontal vertically whatever it doesn't matter you can do it vertically on one side and then wrap a ribbon around the other side of it so you know just think anything goes so see I'm done putting my paint on and see how it's not neat I just kind of put it any any way the brush felt like it wanted to go and so now I'm done with that time to let it dry and then we'll start the rest so here's a quick tip in order to get your paint to dry faster just set it in front of a fan and it'll be dry in less than five minutes I'm sure it was like three or four minutes the paints dry and then you can resume working so that's just a plus and a little tip to help you get through a little faster I'm off gathering supplies I decided I want to go ahead and finish this project on camera for you so you can see how I got from from zero to Z so I have no idea what I want to do I'm just gathering up a bunch of stuff and I'll be right back before I get started with all of the things that I collected to finish I want to talk to those people who feel like they're not so crafty who want to go ahead and do the easy finish maybe you don't have a lot of time just grab some ribbon it does not have to match it can be contrasting things you would never put together patterns colors anything anything that appeals to you you want to cut it pretty pretty long so that you can wrap it around multiple times it just looks better when it's wrapped around more than once you can wrap it around twice three four five times it doesn't matter so I pulled it up to the top did a little twist wrapped it around just be creative in your tie 
but you want to make sure you bring it back up to the top to the front where the color is and tie it in a knot. Here's a little trick. Whenever you get ready to cut, cut at an angle on those ends. It just looks more professional. It looks polished and that's just the look you're going for. See? So you are all done. Tuck in those sides and there you have it. That empty blue space over to the right. I'm a fan of masking tape. You can put a piece of masking tape over there right to and from. It'll look earthy, handmade. You can write directly on the box with a permanent marker. Just go for creativity above anything else. And so there you have it. You are good to go. So let's see what I was able to gather. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at this. I just don't know what I want to do. I just, I, I don't know. Okay, so whatever. Here I go. I got a little heart tag I made a while back. Didn't use some polka dot fabric from Hobby Lobby. This quote on a piece of paper. Now that I want to use for sure. I've got some bling, some faux pearls, a, a Tim Holtz distressor, which is one of my favorite tools. Don't know if I'll use it, but I've got some Tim Holtz tape. Sorry, can't see that. It's just a Tim Holtz dispenser with some like washi tape, it's, except it's Tim Holtz and it's butterfly with some definitions on it. It's white with black print. What else do I have over here? Uh, my score tape, which is like double-sided tape. It's just more permanent. And I've got these mini things I want to use. Uh, I'm sorry, I dropped that. A mini clothespin, a mini binder clip. I know I'm going to use it. So this is what I've got. And I still have no idea what I want to do. What else do I have over here? Oh, some pinking shears. So let me just move everything out of the way. Going to see what I can come up with. I'm going to fast forward through this and you'll see it at the end. So here's what I have. This is the finished product. I put a little tag with her name on it and hung it from the binder clip. And you'll see it dangling there. It's in green. You can't see her name. It says Valencia. I've got the binder clip. I put on a little tag, Merry Christmas 2012. You'll see the tape that I have back there with the definition on it. If I took the clip off of the paper, you'd see it's in an accordion fold and you'll see the quote. And that quote talks about the fact that on our journey, we're really blessed to find an honest friend. And that's what I wanted her to know that I appreciate so much about her. And at the corner of that paper, you'll see those three black dots. Now I'm folding it back up and going to clip it again see how cute that is but those three black dots that you see there are just some adhesive beads that I wanted to use to take up some of that empty space and you see how much of a difference it makes it doesn't take a lot I just put them there in an angle and voila so this is the finished product I love it I hope you like it as much as I do I hope you have fun with yours Merry Christmas to you and enjoy your friends and your family